Hello and welcome back to Worlds with Reviews and More. So, um, just finished watching the Survivor series about three, four minutes ago. So, I'm gonna get straight into my review and what I thought. And um, yeah, uh, we might as well start with the biggest news. And I thought in general it was a great pay per view. I was really excited for it, and it didn't disappoint. It kicked off um, with two really good matches in the tournament semi-finals. Um, you know, Reigns beating um, Del Rio was was great. Um, great match. Um, I thought they were going to tease a heel turn, but it wasn't to be, and Reigns came out the victor. And obviously Ambrose picked up the win over Owens. It was a, a decent match. I thought the Reigns and Del Rio match was the better of the two. Um, it was about at this point, though, that I, I actually began to think that they were probably going to go with the cash-in as the, um, as the finish. Um... So if we go back before that, we had um, the pre-show Survivor Series match where Goldust made his return to team with the Dudleys and Neville and Titus O'Neil against The Miz, Bo Dallas, Stardust and Ascension, and as you'd expect, the faces won. I'm uh, not sure why they chose to eliminate Neville. I think they could have had all five faces survive, but, you know, decent match and good to see Goldust back. Um, we then had the other traditional match, Survivor Series match between Ryback, Kalisto, Sin Cara and the Usos versus the New Day, Sheamus and King Barrett. Um, and basically this was, you know, again, the faces came out on top, uh, New Day abandoned uh, Sheamus and you were thinking, you know, there's a reason for this and I think we knew what was going to happen. It looks like um, it was not a right match though, you know, and it looks like Kalisto is probably going to get a big push in the company. I think they want to emulate the success of Rey Mysterio and I think they're going to try and do that. And and just on a personal note, I thought Ryback's cover was really poor and I'm not that impressed with Ryback in general. Um, Divas match, um, we had Paige v Charlotte. Um, not really sure what's going off with the women's wrestling at the moment. It really needs sorting out and I think, you know, it's not really going to get any better until Triple H becomes the sole kind of Head of booking, he needs to book the division, and um, you know it was as as was expected. Really, Charlotte retained. You know, not everyone expected that. You know, she's going to have a, a decent run as champion, and they both took some good bumps. But it really is kind of need and needing of a, a of a quick fix. Even though I don't think it's going to happen, I think you know Sasha Banks maybe needs to be pushed more, um, and maybe that's what they'll go down the route of now. Because that you know how much more mileage are they going to have in in Charlotte versus Paige? I couldn't stand if the title had changed hands. They could have gone back and forth so it's up to them now to see where they go then you had Tyler Breeze versus Dolph which is a really good match you know two good workers um you kind of look at is Dolph um just um the future for Tyler Breeze you know possibly not again if Triple H takes over control you'd think to the uh, Triple H would be keen to push his own NXT prospect but you know it's, it's the example is there of how not to be booked in Dolph Ziggler um, I was thinking these two would make a really good tag team if at any point in the future, you know, their careers did stall again. Um, team up together like a mentor and protege type thing. I think it would work really well. Maybe be a heel tag team. Um, and Breeze wins, which I think was the um, right decision. He, he wins with the Unprettier, the tribute to Christian. Um, it's, it suits his character that move. Um, and there is a lot of, you know, comparisons to HBK at the moment. I still kind of put Seth Rollins in that mold. As as the hair to HBK, but I can see the comparisons, and I'm quite impressed by Tyler. Um, next, you had Taker and Kane versus the Wyatts, and it turned out Rowan was took out the match before the bell even rang. Harper and Wyatt stepped up. Um, it was decent, you know. It was mainly about the Kane Taker, you know, the Taker being 25 years, um, and it was um, a good decision for Strowman's first real demolition bump you know whatever to be cut to come from taker and kane made sense you know they choke slammed him from the tip to the table and that was a good moment for all of them really you know it's going to be good for Strowman because that's his first bump and he gets to say that taker and kane did it and it's also good for taker and kane being the ones to deliver the first blow to Strowman. and um you know it, as, as was expected uh taker picked up the win with a tombstone on harper uh, it makes sense half taking the pin as well to fill bray not again, not sure where this feud's going to go, whether it's going to end now. I think it probably will end. So we'll see what happens. And then, of course, we had the main event uh, World Championship match between Reigns and Ambrose. And everyone was expecting a heel turn. It didn't happen. You know, Reigns beat Ambrose clean. They embraced. The confetti came down and everyone's thinking, oh, no, it's just a crowning scene 2.0. Triple H comes out. Are you thinking, is he going to shake his hand? Turns out, no, he spears Triple H. And then Sheamus comes in. 
uh, cashes in his money in the bank, um, failed with the first pin after the bro kick, but then bro kicks him again and picks up the win. Um, I think, you know, all in all it was the right decision, considering that Reigns was still getting booed. I think if he had been universally accepted at the start of the night, they would have gone down with a clean win from uh, for Reigns and left it at that. And I thought they probably would have. They're not really wanting to get rid of Ambrose as a heel yet because, you know, he sells really good merchandise. Same with Reigns. Um, Ambrose can go straight back into a feud with Ambrose for the Intercontinental title, which was supposed to happen anyway if Rollins hadn't got injured. So now we've basically just replaced... Um, We've just replaced uh, Rollins with Sheamus as the top heel in the country, uh, in the company, and you've got Reigns now as the kind of top face. And so you know he still has been WWE World Champion. Obviously, he just lost it straight away. And you know the whole point of this again is to add sympathy to Reigns and to try and build him and get him over naturally with the fans. It's still not happening, so it's difficult to see where they're gonna go. And maybe they will just have to turn him heel eventually. But I think there will be a lot more sympathy from him for you know finally after coming so close, you know, getting there. And then to have it taken away. Um, but all in all, it was a really good pay-per-view. I enjoyed it. I'm glad I stayed up for it. And I'm glad that, um, you know, it it was well worked. And I think the matches were good. And I think now we'll really see the WWE kick on. I'm sad about Seth getting injured. Because um, he was my favourite wrestler in the company. Um, and now, obviously, I think it's just a case of rebuilding, you know, building this feud up between Reigns and Sheamus at TLC. And... We'll see where we go into the new year with the Royal Rumble and see who's going to have that WrestleMania spot. And, you know, it opens it up for Reigns or Ambrose to win that, really. Um, but, yeah, so I'm pleased. I'm happy. Um, it's probably the right decision, you know, coming up with Christmas and keeping Reigns and Ambrose face. So now we'll see where we go. Anyway, guys, that's my review. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've enjoyed Survivor Series. And I'll be back soon with some more videos. Until then, peace.